What's going on, sixpackabs.com? It's Thomas DeLauer, your lead nutritionist and also the creator of the science-based six-pack intermittent fasting program, which you can see down below. Today, I am talking about cholesterol and testosterone production and why you actually need more dietary cholesterol if you want to be able to produce sufficient amounts of testosterone that are gonna allow you to stay lean and build the muscle that you like. But before I go into detail on that, I have to give you a general breakdown of what cholesterol actually is. Because a lot of us end up thinking that it's just this bad thing that we need to watch all the time. The fact is, cholesterol is very, very, very important to the body. And all it is is a soft, fatty, waxy-like substance that's in the body. But the soft, fatty, waxy-like substance also covers every single cell in our body. And it's most prevalent in the membrane, which is the outside of the cell, which makes it so that cells can communicate with each other. Because cholesterol is soft and waxy, signals can be transmitted between each other really well through the substance. So it's very, very important for cell communication and for signal transduction. So we need that, okay? But the hard part is that cholesterol, being the fact that it is a lipid, doesn't move very well. Remember, it's soft and it's waxy. It doesn't flow through the bloodstream very well. It has to be emulsified because it doesn't just break down in blood or water like water-soluble things do. It would actually bubble up and it wouldn't work. It would be like mixing oil and water. But if you actually package it up with different proteins, it works. So when cholesterol is packaged up with proteins, those things are called lipoproteins. And those lipoproteins are the common things like HDL, high-density lipoprotein, and LDL, low-density lipoprotein. A lot of us just hear the words HDL and LDL and we think good cholesterol and bad cholesterol, but we don't really think about what they're actually doing. There are proteins that are carrying cholesterol to the right areas of the body, including every single cell that we need to function. So it's not like it's just this bad thing that's flowing around. And in a second, I'm gonna explain why it actually has an effect when it comes down to producing sex hormones like testosterone. But first off, let me explain what HDL and LDL do. HDL carries cholesterol from around the body and it takes it to the liver. Therefore, the liver can either recycle it or process it as waste. What LDL does is take cholesterol from the liver to the various areas of the body that need it. So all the cells that need cholesterol get cholesterol delivered directly by the LDL. So it doesn't make sense. Why is LDL considered bad? The only reason that LDL is considered bad is because people are misinformed. It's really inflammation that ends up making LDL bad. LDL will go ahead and deliver cholesterol to wherever it is needed. But if the demands are already met, then that LDL continues to circulate throughout the body and tries to find areas where there's inflammation to lock onto, therefore clogging an artery. So don't get the wrong idea. LDL is not bad. LDL is doing just as good of a thing as HDL is. Now let's get down to the testosterone production side. It all starts in the brain. It starts with the hypothalamus, which is essentially the CEO of your brain that dictates everything that goes on within the company, your body. Okay? What happens is the hypothalamus senses a need for more testosterone. So it goes ahead and it produces something known as GnRH, gonadotropin releasing hormone. This gonadotropin releasing hormone travels a short distance over to the pituitary gland, which is in the back of your head, and the pituitary gland then says, okay, now I need to produce hormones to start creating testosterone. So what it does is the pituitary gland creates follicle stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone. The follicle stimulating hormone and the luteinizing hormone travel down from your pituitary gland down to your testes, okay, or the ovaries in women. It's a lot more prevalent, a lot more distinct in men because it directly has to do with sperm and testosterone production. So what ends up happening is the Leydig cells that are down in the testes end up producing testosterone or they produce sperm. So the luteinizing hormone produces the testosterone and the follicle stimulating hormone ends up producing the sperm. This whole process is called the hypothalamus pituitary gonadal axis. It's where the hypothalamus communicates with the pituitary, pituitary signals to the testes, the testes produce those hormones. So where does cholesterol come into play? Well, those Leydig cells need cholesterol to combine FSH and LH, follicle stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone, to create sperm and testosterone. So if we don't have enough cholesterol floating around, that luteinizing hormone cannot combine in the Leydig cell to actually create testosterone. So we need that cholesterol. Without it, the Leydig cells have nothing to synthesize testosterone with. But again, they're auto-regulatory, which means that if we don't have enough coming in from the diet, the body will find a way to create it. The problem is if we rely on the body creating it, 
we end up running out eventually. And it ends up inhibiting the Leydig cells to be able to produce enough testosterone. So if we are not getting enough cholesterol from our diet, we are not supporting the Leydig cell's ability to produce testosterone, thereby directly inhibiting our body's ability to produce testosterone that keeps you lean and helps you build muscle. Now, when it comes down to how this works with fasting, when it works with ketosis, or when it works with your diet in general, you just have to make sure that you're constantly keeping your body in a state where it can synthesize the cholesterol. Cholesterol is never going to be a good thing if you're not active, okay? If you're not triggering your body to actually need testosterone, like with a stimulus, like working out, then it's very, very difficult for the body to utilize that cholesterol. But the general gist of this video was to just explain how cholesterol works with testosterone and to sort of debunk a lot of what we hear in the mainstream media when it comes down to cholesterol being a bad thing. Because when it all comes down to it, it's a good thing. We need it, and we need it for the testosterone function that ultimately keeps us lean and keeps us healthier. So as always, keep it locked in here on sixpackabs.com, and I will see you in the next video.